Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Start Local, the podcast focused on helping small businesses in Chester County, PA, and the greater Philly area as we try to navigate through the COVID-19 economy. Now, before I bring in Liam and our guest today, I do want to tell you about our new monthly newsletter where we will send you some great takeaways from the the month's worth of episodes, as well as news happening around the county. If that sounds good to you, you can sign up for this totally free, totally monthly newsletter over at startlocal.co slash news. That's startlocal dot co slash news. Okay, so I'm Joe Casabona. I'm here with my fellow co-host, Liam Dempsey. Liam, how are you today? Joe, great. Thanks for flagging up that newsletter. I'm really excited to get that up and going. And a number of folks have been asking us if we have anything like that. So I'm really excited to share that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm excited uh, to to put out more information, but also to connect with with the listeners, which is um, one of our main reasons for doing it as well. So yeah, definitely. Excited to start that. And I'm also excited about today's guest. His name is Mark Avery, a.k.a. Juice the Barber. He is the owner of KSQ Barber Lounge in Kennett Square. Mark, how are you today? Doing wonderful. How are you guys doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We are going to be talking to you about what it's like running a barber shop, a barber lounge. Uh, here in a COVID-19 world. But before we get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? So my name is Mark Avery, a.k.a. Juice the Barber. I am a Kenneth Square native. I was born and raised here, graduated Kenneth High School class in 2006. And I now own uh, the KSQ Barber Lounge, as previously stated. Uh, It's in the heart of uh, Kenneth Square, located in the same building, uh, as the Kenneth Flash for all of our old Kenneth tiers and longtime Kenneth folks, that would be the same building as the old Newberries. That's what we know it as. And I would say uh, that just opened, I opened this up back in November of 2019. It's a small studio setup, so it's just a one on one with me and my client, more attention to detail, uh, just a more relaxed environment, relaxed atmosphere where anyone of any uh, walk of life or any style, any texture of hair can come and receive the type of haircut and male grooming services from anything from uh, just longer cuts that are just all shears and and providing volume to your skin fades to hot lather shades. I do everything in between. There's a place where anyone can come in, feel welcome, and receive the service that they want. Awesome. As as a benefactor of many uh, hot lather shaves. That is, if if you gentlemen listening uh, have never had one before, I would strongly recommend it. It's my best service. It's my favorite service to provide. I highly awesome. recommend. Well, we're certainly going to talk about how you are serving customers in your shop down there, in your lounge down there in Kennett Square, and down there because I'm based up in Northern Chester County. So, uh, greetings from the far okay. end, um, Mark. You you shared with us that you opened up the shop on your own in November of 2019. And that gave you about five or six months before COVID-19 hit. And then a lot has changed since then. Can you kind of walk us through what getting your own business off the ground looked like and how that went for the first few months? And then talk a little bit about what that change in lockdown orders has meant for you and for your business. Yeah, so it it was great. Uh, You know, had a lot of support when I initially opened up back in November. Um, and I saw a lot of clients that I've been cutting for years, even going back to my time at Cruising Style Barbershop over in Westchester. Uh, from the time I started as apprentice and apprentice and getting my license, I went through that whole phase until uh, to kind of build up until November 2018. And it was an amazing feeling, you know, getting everything off the ground, having the clients come in, that especially for those that had never experienced a one-on-one environment like this or had even known that this would, was an option. Um, it seemed to be something everybody liked, and I was seeing uh, seeing a lot of uh, new faces, meeting a lot of new people, and making a lot of uh, connections and networking, and just building the client. But over time, and then COVID hits, and it's just a complete shutdown. Uh, for the, I guess to say, the trend for me from November until pretty much March 14th when we had to shut down, I saw between like five to ten brand new people every week, and it just kept building and kept building the momentum. Got to the point where I was servicing, uh, you know, pretty much between like the high 40s to 
high fifties, almost sixty people each week, and that's that's great. It's exactly where I'm trying to be. You know, making money, and then COVID hit, everything stopped. You know, I couldn't cut. I didn't couldn't do anything. You know, I was kind of sitting here, you know, with my hands crossed. And anyone understand starting out a business, you know, that first year is so vital. Like it really sets the, sets the table for how the business will go uh, from there on forward. And for the first year of the business, I will be total. I would be closed for for four months. Um, I wasn't able. You know, had to be shut down that entire time. And it was it's it was it was heartbreaking to be honest with you. There was days I didn't know. I was still going to have the shop the days when I didn't know how I was going to work client wise, where people felt comfortable coming back into the shop after COVID, even if I am following the CDC guidelines, recommendations, everything like that. There's so many, there were so many factors and just to have it come to a complete halt. And I think as a, as a business owner, as well as just as being uh, being a man, you know, trying to provide for your family and stuff like that to see there's literally nothing you can do about it. You just have to follow it and follow the, uh, all the, all the guidelines and everything coming down. Um, it was hard. It was very hard to just to be completely transparent, but, you know, thankfully we were able to get through it and get back to the opening phase and, um, just trying to almost, I guess, recover to get back to that same trend that I was hitting before COVID. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is something that I'm curious in because Liam and I both run digital businesses. Uh, you know, I've never had an experience with a brick and mortar store. Um, but we've had representatives from the local, state, and federal level talking about kind of some economic relief um, for small businesses and stuff like that. W- were you able to take advantage of any of that? Did it help? Or were you able to kind of uh, coast until you were able to reopen uh, because you're a, a one-on-one shop? So I had, it was kind of a two-part thing, I guess you could say. The issue I had with a lot of the economic relief being out since I didn't open until November mm-hmm. of 2019, I literally had five weeks of a tax return to be able to give to some for a lot of the relief. So a lot of people were denying it, denying me the relief because there wasn't enough of a paper trail as of yet. So thankfully, the online I was able to get uh, to get a grant that uh, provided some relief, and then from there, just really. I had to had to do the work and just try to build back up, you know, borrowing from against my savings, anything I had saved up, even help some help from family, just to be able to get through until we can get reopened. And since that time, we've just been recovering, trying to make the money I need to make to pay them back as well and stay afloat. But it's it's getting better with time. Um, but it, that was a that was another hard piece. That's another hard thing that I. I, w- I felt helpless in, in certain aspects, honestly. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for for sharing with us. And as Joe mentioned, with with our digital businesses, we didn't experience the same kind of shutdown that you that you would have. And mm-hmm. I can only imagine what that must have been like. Where you know you're 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 owning your own business, you're growing, you're seeing new customers, new faces coming in, you're loving it. You're like, this is working. Oh my gosh, how fantastic! And then just to have the door slammed so hard in your face, nothing personal, just, wow, bam, that must, thank you for taking the time to share with us. That's, that's really powerful. Lockdown orders have been relaxed, certainly across Southeastern PA. A lot of businesses are opening up and have been open for a period of time. There's still some regulations and health practices, social distancing, use of masks and the like. Talk to us about running a lounge, running a barber shop, and what that means for you where there are these health and safety guidelines. What does that look like for you day to day? And what does that mean for your business? Uh, so day to day, it just add, it does add some additional tasks that I wouldn't have had to do beforehand. Um, for my business, although it does add something additional, honestly, In the end, I don't think it's as bad because I'm already providing and focusing on -on one-on-one attention more than anything else. So what I did, I just changed out my appointment slot times. I used to do, if it was just a haircut, uh, it would be a half-hour appointment for for that time slot. You know, I'm getting people in and out. But now I've stretched everything, no matter what the service, even if it's a kid's cut that takes me 15 minutes, I stretch it to 45. And the reason I do that is so I can wipe down the surfaces in between 
I can spray Lysol. I can do whatever I need to do between every single client. And I'd rather just take that safety precaution. Uh, it's like, yes, number one is for the clients, but just as much it is, as it is for them, it's for me as well. Like I still have a family. I got to keep safe. I still have people, I, you know, my grandparents and any, anyone else, you know, that could be affected due to COVID. We all know we could all, you know, people could have it and not know, you know, all the asymptomatic stuff you've seen around the way, around uh, the internet and social media. So you just would rather be safe rather than sorry. So even between every single client, uh, any touch, any surface that gets touched by the client, mainly obviously the chair, tapes, um, stuff like that, but even my credit card processor, everything gets wiped down between everyone. And I try to leave enough time. So even after the wipe down, I still have some time to sit before the next person comes in. So it delays, or it, because of adding that additional time, yes, I'm getting less people in per day, or I even have the opportunity to get less people in per day than I would have pre-COVID. But at the end of the day, if that's what I need to do to make sure I feel safe and everyone else feels safe, then that's just what I have to do. Yeah, I, I, I oh, sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, Liam. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think that's uh, really important and, and probably really comforting, right? Because, um, you know, as I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the show, I love getting my hair cut, getting the hot lather shave. Um, I did cut my hair cut once over the, uh, cut my hair once over this pandemic. My friends tell me because I'm Italian, I, I, I'd i be good at it. Um, but I've, <laughs> I've been hesitant to maybe want to go back to the local barber shop because of the close quarters. And the things that you just described there make me feel a lot better about scheduling a haircut, which my wife has been encouraging me to do for a little while. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll see you at the yeah, lounge. Yeah, for soon. sure. <laughs> Mark, thank you for that. Will you are you seeing a return to your customer base? Are folks coming back? You said it. You you can see fewer in a day because if you're you're blocking longer time. But are is your day filling up? I at the moment, to be completely transparent with you, it's hit or miss. I have some days. I end up like when I first first sent out that blast. Um, uh, first time I that bus, I was reopening. I had some days that were, I would book up. It was 45 minutes every every 45 straight through. And then you get some days where it's, it may be you're getting you're just getting a little less. Not even say maybe you're just getting a little less. But I I've seen um a good amount like my base base clients the, the guys that are always below to me. Of course they've come back. Uh, but it just, there's a mix because I've, I've talked to other shop owners. I have mentors that are in this business, even guys that are influencers in the industry that teach for the clipper companies, everything like that. And they also own barbershops. It's a mix. A lot of people have seen a drop off. And I think the biggest thing is people don't feel comfortable. I think people feel, obviously, if you're going into a big shop, the shop I used to work at, um, at one point there were eight barbers in there. So, you know, you have people coming and going, people sitting like, it going into an environment like that, people probably aren't going to feel comfortable coming into an environment like my, it's literally just me and you, whoever you bring at the time, I even limited the appointment, uh, the amount of people that can come in. If it's multiple people, the only way I allow it is if it's like two brothers coming together or two father and sons, or even if it's a, a mother bringing her child in, like I try to really limit the amount of people that are in here purposely, just so everyone feels comfortable. And be, just so I feel comfortable as well. I don't know. The, big, the biggest thing is, you know, we pray and we hope that people are being clean and wearing a mask and doing what they're supposed to do. But in reality, we don't know what happens when people leave our site. So just to be on the safe side, I, I put all of those guidelines in place, even on top of whatever, the, you know, the CDC recommended just to make sure everyone feels comfortable. Yeah, those safety guidelines are inevitably going to make your existing customer base, your loyal customer base, happy and feel more comfortable. How are you communicating these safety practices, these extra steps that you're going? How are you communicating that to your existing client base and then also maybe to a wider distribution list or a wider community? How are you sharing that information? So to be completely transparent with you, that's one thing I have slacked on. Um, getting it to a wider base. When I opened up and sent out a text blast, email blast to all my clients, I gave them, it was almost a breakdown of the differences on how I operated before to how we're going to operate now. So they were all made aware and they could decide, you know, if they're, if you feel comfortable coming in and you want to make an appointment, I'm here and this is how it's going to work. For those that are looking for somewhere to go, to be honest with you, I haven't really, 
I haven't done that. That's something I need. I, everyone keeps telling me I need to take pictures. So even I, I found um, and not one of the biggest things I do probably, I got 99% alcohol to really literally spray around the entire shop with the Lysol and all that stuff. So even just seeing me wipe down, spray down, wipe the chair, like I thought about putting up a video just of what I do in between every single client so everyone can see that. And that's probably what will be done within the next day or so, but I, I need to do better from that aspect of the show. Yeah, I, I think that's that's really important, especially now, you know, we live in like the Instagram, TikTok, social media society. Um, what, uh, what properties, I guess, are you on? What are, uh, social media, do you have your own website? Where, where do you live on the internet? So social media is my big, is the big key. I tell everyone in any kind of service providing business or any business, really, that social media is free marketing. Like it, it makes perfect sense. You can put yourself out there. People can see it. it it's easy. So that's really the biggest thing. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, the, my the two Instagram accounts I have is at KSQ Barber Lounge and at underscore Juice the Barber. Uh, I also... Uh, do have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash juice the barber 610. Uh, and I use that. And then my even my Google page, as well as my booking site, I book using a company called Vagaro. It's www.vagaro.com and slash KSQ Barber Lounge. And that's the link directly to the site that provides you all the information on like my pricing. You can see some photos up there of the work. Um, you can see information about how to book an appointment, my cancellation policy. Everything was listed there. And all of the rest of the outlets, like as far as Google and Instagram and Facebook, I just make sure I upload, constantly upload pictures. More often than not, you'll see for me, I try to post something at least once a day. Sometimes it's two or three times a day, depending on really when I remember to take pictures. Uh, but I, I try to really use that being as much as possible. And it, it has worked a lot. It, it gained, I, There's so many people, even from other shops I've worked at, because I've been always been aggressive about building my brand and building uh, my that following, I've even had other barbers at other shops I worked at benefit off someone finding my post and me being in that shop. So it's, I try to be really active. I, I talk to my clients on a regular basis through social media because I, I tell everyone, I don't look for you just to come in here and give me money. I look to build a relationship. I want to know about you. I want to know about your family your business, everything like that. And the social media is the easiest way to know all of that. You can see what's going on, what people are doing and keep in touch. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'll be sure to link all of those things at the show notes for this episode too, over at startlocal.co. Awesome. Mark, the, the value of those personal relationships is, is hugely important, especially when folks need a haircut or a shave at least once or twice. Once a month or two, right? Depending on what they're doing. Uh, right. and maybe even more. You talked a lot about wanting to have relationships and chat with your con- with your customers and really get to know them. And certainly, though, the barbershop has a reputation as a place where folks go to talk and share and chit-chat and talk about things. I wonder if anecdotally you can share with us what you've been hearing in your shop around what what other folks are thinking of the economy in Chester County, what they're thinking about business, what they're thinking about economic outlook. What are you hearing in the KSQ Barber Lounge? To be honest with you, I'm hearing kind of on every end of the spectrum you can imagine. I hear some of my business owner clients and friends, um, you know, worried about their jobs or worried about their businesses see, to see even if they're going to make it you know, through this whole situation, there are restaurants that I know of because of their situation. They may not, not might not be able to have the outdoor seating. They might not be able to have uh, a lot of the other things that other restaurants and places are benefiting from. So they're worried, you know, once we get through the summer season, what's going to happen? If I can only have X amount of people coming into my restaurant uh, for dine-in services, and that's really the bulk of everything that they do. How is that going to work? How is the takeout going to work? Like everything, there's so many different things. But then even on the flip side, a lot of people I know who are looking at this time to step out entrepreneurially the way they wanted to beforehand and they didn't have opportunity. But now because so many things have gone out of business or so many, uh, so many people have moved and shifted, they may have a chance to, to start that restaurant. They may have a chance to start that 
business, whatever it is. It's honestly, I'm hearing good and bad because it, 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 yes, I am. I still question. I still wonder. I still worry slightly, obviously being a person you're going to in the state we're in currently. But at the same time, as much as I question and worry, I see that there's opportunity for things to come up and grow and be built and establish themselves. So it's, it's kind of, like I said, it's just on both ends. I mean, I'm kind of hearing it all. And it's, it's not more one more than the other. It's kind of a balance of everything. It's just, just a little bit in each pocket. Yeah, that's really interesting and, and perhaps not surprising, certainly, in our businesses, Joe and I get a little bit of that as well. And I, and I think you're absolutely right. There's plenty of opportunity. It takes a lot more legwork. It takes a lot more, I got to try something new, you know, social media, and, and you're leading the way there and, and, and teaching some of the, maybe some of the old guard of your industry how to do things. But uh, it pays off, doesn't it? And, and, it, and it can help bridge the challenges that we're, that we're facing in this COVID-19 economy. Thank you. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, that's part of the reason we started this show, right? Is to get ideas from local business owners for how they can grow. So you, you know, like Liam said, you've provided great uh, advice on social media. Uh, last week, we spoke to uh, Jim from Levante about how he's kind of handling the reopening and things like that. So um, there's uh, thank you for adding to hopefully what is a very helpful collection of resources for small businesses in the area. Um, and we just want to wrap up here by asking if people want to learn more about you. I know you gave a lot of your accounts already, but you know where can people find you? How can they reach out? Definitely, you can reach anything. Um, reach me at any time. You can email me at uh, juicethebarber.info at gmail.com. I do have a separate email for the shop itself at ksbbarberlounge at gmail.com. But anything directly related to trying to grow and build, and any just questions, I'm, I'm always here. I'm transparent. Obviously, like with the social media, um, you always can reach on me there or to schedule a haircut come in, sit down and we can talk. If you have any questions about anything that I can help you with, uh, I gladly will. Like I said, this, it's not, I've learned that being in business as much as obviously we're in business to make money, but if you focus more on the relationships, the money always follows that things will come. And that's something I, that was a big, big piece. I didn't really understand. I'm a numbers guy prior to me, you know, being a barber, I thought I wanted to be an accountant. So crunching numbers, like that's just what I did. I I was completely wrong. I just like money. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all it is. So, but honestly, it, it just it's much easier. I feel much more rewarded having someone come in here and sit for a haircut, and they feel inspired to go do something that they want to do, other than just having someone come in here and pay me money to receive a service. Like we can talk, we can be, you, uh, I, I tell clients all the time, as much as I feel like I can be a resource to them, all of my clients are resources to me. You know, there's, there, even if it's just in life, there's people from different walks of life. I have clients that are Middle Eastern, that are uh, Spanish, that are white, that are black. It doesn't matter. It just, everyone comes from different areas. They have different experiences and that's something we can learn from. And we can all, we're one big melting pot. I can say growing up in Kennedy in Chester County, Living around here, this area is much more diverse than a lot of other areas I've been in. And for and I say that for a small town vibe, to have this little of a space and be able to see different people, different cultures and different different ethnicities and races. And we all they're all resources. That's why I look at everybody. There's that person knows something I don't, and that's something they could teach me to better my life, better my business, whatever. And if we look at things like that. Everyone, I think, would really be successful long term, and everyone would. We would all have relationships. We'd all have the money and everything. Awesome. Yeah. I uh, I love that. I don't think there's a better way for us to close out the show. So, thanks everybody for listening. Thanks, Mark, for your time. And uh, until next until next week, stay safe out there. <laughs>